close. The closer you get, the warmer you will be. <laughs> uh, thank you all very much uh, for coming out today. My name is, is Eric Joya, G-I-O-I-A. Um, and I'm joined with a number of community activists, business owners, business owners, uh, cultural um, leaders, and, uh, and many members of the Long Island City community. And we're here to say in a united voice, enough is enough. Um, somebody needs to stand up for the public and say that we just can't take this anymore. Um, paying more and getting less. The number seven train is a lifeline to Queens. And when you cut the number seven train off, it hurts residents, it hurts businesses, it hurts people who are, who are struggling in a tough economy to make ends meet. In such difficult times, the MTA is making things worse. Now, I want to be clear that I don't question that there has to be work done. I don't question the hard work that is being done by MTA workers. I commend them uh, for working through the night uh, and keeping the trains running and keeping the trains safe. I don't have any quarrel with the work that they're doing. My quarrel is with the MTA executives who make the big decisions. Um, more needs to be done to mitigate the damages that are being done to these people. Uh, there are simple steps that can be taken. It's not a matter of resources, it's about making decisions. A shuttle bus service taking people uh, from here through the Midtown Tunnel, uh, either along the 7 route or at the very least the Lexington, Lexington Avenue line so they can get to and from Manhattan. For the person who lives in Western Queens, uh, any of the neighborhoods in Long Island City, for them to get to Manhattan today, it would either quadruple their commute if they want to take public transportation or it would cost them $30 to $40 if they took a private car. Now if you're making 12 bucks an hour, that means you have to work half your day just to pay for your cab. Uh, and that is wrong. When you talk to business owners and they tell you that they rely on foot traffic and they rely on a number seven train, uh, these are business owners that are just scraping by in a tough economy. When their foot traffic goes down because the seven train is off, these businesses are in danger of going under. When you talk to a, uh, someone who's looking for an apartment, in fact, somebody emailed me this morning and they said that our press release had gotten their attention because they were looking for an apartment. They said, how can I live in Long Island City if I can't get to work? And so think about what that does uh, to people who are either looking for apartments or people who are trying to rent uh, out their apartments or sell their homes. Think about what that does to property values uh, in the neighborhood. Um, so very simply, um, the message seems to be clear. The MTA is saying to the people of Queens, this winter you're on your own. And the people of Queens are saying, we demand more. We expect more. Uh, if you're asking us to pay more on our metro card, then please at least give us the bare essentials. Give us an ability to get to and from work, to visit our families, allow us to take mass transportation. Uh, especially, by the way, uh, you know, as we're trying to encourage people to take mass transportation and move into a greater century. All of us agree, and we have Asma Alley right behind us, the Queensbridge, Ravenswood, Woodside, and Astoria Houses. Uh, some of the biggest power plants on the East Coast are about a mile behind me. Some of the highest asthma rates in New York City uh, from that Queens corridor straight up into the Bronx. So we ask people to take mass transit, to get out of their cars. How can you ask somebody to take mass transit if you don't give them a safe, efficient way to get to work? Uh, it's simply unacceptable tell people that their commute needs to be quadrupled or they have to spend 30 or 40 dollars to take a taxi cab. With that, um, we're going to hear from, uh, is the manager from Riverview here yet? Um, well, we'll hear from uh, a local business owner. His family has been on Vernon Boulevard for, uh, for decades, almost a century I'd say. Um, uh, Brian Adams, uh, who's got a store right down the block and is also a member of the uh, LIC, BDC, the Long Island City Business Development Corporation. Thank you, Brian. Hi. Uh, thanks to everyone for coming out. This is uh, very important. Uh, as Councilman Joy has stated, uh, this affects many, many people. Uh, the businesses here that are trying to just scrape it by, uh, trying to get by, it's tough right now. And the MTA, uh, by doing this, is not really giving us anything to our needs. Uh, they're not helping us any way to try to get by. It's just wrong, it's a bad plan, and we need alternative services. This is not going to work out for us, it's not going to work out for the businesses, the senior citizens. It's just bad, and we need something done as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, next, give a round of applause. You did not early Sunday morning. Um, now we're going to hear from Cheryl Lewandowski, the uh, president of the Chocolate Factory, which is a, a fine cultural institution right down the block here. Good morning. My name is Sheila Lewandowski. 
And that's L-E-W-A-N-D-O-W-S-K-I. And I run the Chocolate Factory Theater for performing art space about one block from here. Our season opens next week. We are part, we are having an exhibit that is part of an international festival of presenters. We cannot get our audience here. We have performances running three weeks in February that we are preparing for a 50% drop in pre-sales. I am a resident of this community. I work with local businesses. The message the MTA is sending to us is shut down on weekends. We understand they need to do work. But I'm with Council Member Joyous saying give us a direct connection into the city. Let us get our audience members, our clients, our family members here and back. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. To the members of the press corps, you should come out on the weekends, charge into your newspapers, and, uh, <laughs> and see for yourself the, uh, the effect it's having on, on a chocolate factory. Um, next, we're going to hear from, from Deirdre Fierick, uh, a seven train rider uh, and a, uh, the Democratic district leader for Western Queens. Thank you very much for coming out today. I think it's more, I guess one of the things that's most important is that by you being here, there will be more notification to the residents about what's going on than some of the notifications that have been given in the past week. I ride the seven train, there was no notification, I and mean, we talked about this, in the stations where the riders go. So hopefully by you getting the word out, we'll be able to get direct information out to the people, and it's, we've, we've had conversations, we hope to continue to have conversations deal with the problem, but it's also just really important that people know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you.